This is the full story of how I built my dream truck camper in just 30 days. Before we get into this video, I just quickly want to say that at this point, I really had no idea what I'm doing. And that's the main reason I'm making these videos is to share all the things that I believe I did right and I did wrong. So I'm going to be dropping clues along the entire way. And if you feel like you get any value out of this video, all I ask in return is it would mean a lot if you just hit the like button, subscribe or comment, show some love in whatever way you prefer. I do answer all my comments. So if you have any questions at all, just drop it below. Now, this video is going to be a total fast forward of our entire build, but I did make a series highlighting each section of the way. Um, right now, we're going over the framing, so if you want to check out the video on framing, click the link in the top left corner of the screen. All right, so the first thing that you saw us build was the dolly. This cart was so that we could wheel the camper around once it's built, and also it's built to the same size as our truck bed, so we know we're building the camper to the correct size. And also you saw us build and insulate the floor. The floor is made out of two sheets of half inch ply, and we already put some insulation down there and some two by four so that we could drill into it. My dad was technically the engineer on this build, and I was his right hand man. He knew a lot more about structural integrity than me but you can tell that's built insanely strong and I would say this is a pro and a con it is super nice to know that your rig is super sturdy but yeah it is a lot of two by four and if I were to do it again I'd probably go 80 20 on two by two to two by four so here you can see we're building the back frame of the door one thing I wanted to highlight as well is we put in the cantilever so those cantilever pieces are two two by fours drilled together. They're on edge and the two by fours are 12 feet long. So the full length of the cantilever and to the back of the standing area is 12 feet. And yeah, I mean, you can see um, where the door is lining up. So in this case, um, the door is gonna be right over top of the tailgate being down. I am working with a short bed truck. So yeah, it is gonna be facing down. Um, and here we have some uprights going up. So this is going to be a, obviously the support for the roof. This is kind of like the most iconic part about my build. I had to do a lot of math to figure out the height of each upright. Um, I do have some original drawings of this camper build. Um, they were super basic and something really little to go off of. But if you want to see my original drawings, check out the link in the description. I will link a free download for all my original camper drawings. So at this point in time during the build, I started to actually get like pretty happy because this is where things really started to feel like they were coming together. But that being said, this is where the framing got very like tedious. Um, we had to add in a lot of these two by four blockings, a lot of small things that didn't really feel like as much progress as putting on the roof. Um, but here you can see the support for the nose cone. Um, that's a really fun feature. And yeah, we're basically done with the framing. So you can see what I mean with how sturdy this thing is. It's rigid as hell. I've actually been through some pretty gnarly storms living in this camper where the wind is gusting like crazy. So I'm not always mad about how heavy it is. It is built really strong. So I'm definitely happy with that. Also take a note of how much cross bracing went in. Again, I think this thing is built like nails. Like This thing is basically bulletproof. If your truck can handle you know, the weight, I wouldn't recommend this for a half ton, more like a full ton truck, um, just because if you once you load it up with all your gear and everything, it really adds a ton of weight. So try and think about not just the overall weight of your camper, but how much gear do you need to be carrying with you, and that needs to be under your payload. Once we finished up with the framing, we just moved right along into the siding. So we used quarter inch plywood to keep it light. I'm sure my dad would have loved to put on a half inch ply. That would have been ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, we used quarter inch. I believe it's mahogany plywood, but really any plywood would do. Um, yeah, again, this came together like super quickly. You can see the holes now for all the windows. Four sheets of this four by eight plywood on the roof. And it actually came out with this natural overhang on the back. We were not planning on having that overhang on the back. And we were also not planning on having that deck on the back either, but we ended up loving it so much that we decided to put some supports in. This is one of my favorite things about my camper, I'll be completely honest. I would definitely recommend that for anybody else out there trying to build a camper. Yeah, so this is kind of what that overhang looks like. We put a drip edge on it. 
it's just really nice to have in the weather, you know, when it's raining and stuff. Now here you can see we're drilling on the underside and this is no longer mahogany plywood. On the underside we use quarter inch birch plywood. The reason for this is it's a little bit stronger. And then we use that sealant, that brown you're looking at is the sealant, um, just to keep it more weather protective. You can see a little more brown under there as well. Once we finish up with the plywood, we decide to install all the windows. Here I'm putting in the roof vent and if you're looking to put in a roof vent, I'd really recommend you just put it on top of your outermost layer. I have sheet metal going on top of this and I wish I put the roof vent on top of the sheet metal. So here I'm jigsawing out the hole for my wood stove chimney. You guys already know I absolutely love my wood stove. It's a little bit of a hate love hate relationship. Um, but you can notice here how close this chimney is to wood and you know it's not going to be a regulation when you're building into a camper like this but see how that chimney is touching a 2x4 on the right side I always get a little bit worried about this when I'm running the wood stove and it gets a little hot I have not had any issues after four months and I've had that thing cooking but it was something I was a little worried about at the beginning so here we put this red guard type stuff on top of my roof and honestly i would not recommend this i think this was a definite loss i do not think it was the right material to use if you're looking to seal your roof i would definitely recommend liquid rubber i think what happens is when i drilled through the red guard it just cracked whereas liquid rubber would kind of grab the screws and keep it more sealed um, but once we thought the roof was fully waterproof um, we kept going with the window installs and yeah we, we went along to the sides now, if you're curious about any of the products I used in this camper build, there is going to be a list in the description of as many products and tools that I used that I could find online. I did buy a lot of things in person. For instance, these windows here, I just got from a local window dude. They're literally just shed windows that I just popped in my camper, but I will make a list in the description, so take a look at that. And here you can see we're moving on with the sheet metal. This stuff was terrible to work with, but you can see we're cutting out the hole for the chimney there and we're already doing the fireproof caulking on the chimney. Um, I actually had no issues with this chimney leaking or anything. I, I've had no issues with anything with the, with the chimney. So I, I guess I can say I did install this properly, um, but for peace of mind, if you were to do something similar, I just try and give yourself as much space as possible between any wood, like at least two inches if you can. Obviously it's hard to install things rigid when you, it can't touch any wood, especially when you're framing things out of wood. So here you can see the start of the metal siding coming together. Here you can see where I put the screws. I had a lot of people tell me I put the roofing screws in the wrong spot and they should be on the top of the ridge. I asked at Home Hardware and they told me I could drill to the side or the top. So to my knowledge, either works fine. Um, but yeah, so basically how we installed all the metal was cut each piece to size and install it with roofing screws. Cutting each piece to the curvature of the roof was pretty annoying, um, but this process did go by pretty quick and we're looking at about one to two days work here. And yeah, from there it was just batten everything down and cut everything to size. So here my dad is installing our first jack post. The jack posts here are just from Home Depot. They cost me about $300. I want you to know that they do not move the camper up or down, but they hold it at a certain height. Later in this video, you will see how we actually jack the camper up and down. But yeah, these jack posts just hold the camper at a certain height. Anybody out there looking to make their own DIY jacking system knows it's very hard. This was my dad's idea. I'm definitely not mad about it, but keep in mind that these jack posts are pretty heavy. They're solid steel, I believe, and yeah, they did definitely add some weight to the build. At this point in the build, I will be completely honest with you, I was pretty damn stressed out. I didn't know how heavy this thing was going to be. I didn't know if this thing was going to be road safe. And yeah, overall, I was just pretty nervous that it wasn't actually going to work out, especially after putting all this time and effort into the build. But at this point, I started working on insulating the inside, running all the wiring, and actually building out the interior. So here I'm describing the DC to DC charger, the wires you saw me just hammering go from the starter battery into the DC to DC battery charger. Those cables are going to go to charging my battery, which are going to soon run my lights and stuff. Because I was getting more and more stressed about this project, I actually started filming a lot less, which is too bad because this is where a lot of really cool things came to life. 
Um, but yeah, here you can see I'm just working on some electrical. Those are my back exterior lights. All my lights are LEDs and I wire them all in parallel. I'm right about to put the camper back on the truck and I am going to do an electrical walkthrough. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that video coming soon. And also if you want to see the more in-depth interior build, make sure you check out the video in the top left corner. Now there's one other electrical piece I did not include in this video and I guess I was just too busy not filming to show you guys the footage, but I installed running lights on the exterior. So these are orange lights that go along the roof, basically just let other drivers know that I'm a slow moving unit. But soon I'm going to be adding brake lights and some blinker lights, so if you want to see that video, drop a comment and let me know so I know you're actually interested, but it should be coming in the near future. Here you can see Matt dialing in our little sink kitchenette area. Um, yeah, this is a, one of my favorite pieces. We got barn door on the front there. Matt really is a master worker and he's also working on a removable table. So this is a multi-use table. If you do wanna see the full inside, I do have a full walkthrough of my camper. So yeah, I'll, I'll put that in the top left corner as well just so you guys can check that one out as well. Here my dad and I are working on the wood stove install. You guys know, I think I already said this, but I absolutely love my wood stove. The funny thing about my camper is it really is a winter camper. Most people use their camper in the summer, but I use my camper in the winter. I just had it in storage all summer. And yeah, so the wood stove is really key for me. My dad is working on the damper there and the damper really helps with the airflow control. And yeah, there's my uh, mini wood stove. I will put a link to the product in the description. I absolutely love this thing. It's a cubic foot, one foot by one foot. I can get about 12 inch logs in there. I just have to, you know, put them on an angle. So here is the wood stove fully installed. And the two things I'll just note is obviously all the metal there is a heat shield and we do have a one inch separated wall right behind the wood stove. And we also have a little cubby underneath the wood stove and this is just for firewood storage. And here we basically have what the inside of my camper looks like before putting it on the truck bed. We are pretty eager to get it on the truck um, just so we knew it was road safe and everything like that. All right, so it was officially time to put our true craftsmanship to the test and see if this bad boy is actually gonna work and just even fit on the truck so yeah this is where the dolly really came in handy it was winter time when we built this so it was really nice to be able to work inside my dad's shop he also has a beautiful shop so nothing to complain about there and yeah we basically just backed this thing up and we got it outside and it was time to put our diy jacking system to the test so far i've been sharing how i felt at each stage of the build so i will continue with that and say that at this moment i was feeling pretty proud I couldn't believe that we had actually built something like this and I was just so stoked to try this thing out and that it was actually mine. I was just so stoked for all the future adventures in this little thing. With that being said, I will also say I was extremely nervous for the jacking part. At the end of the day, we installed these jack posts ourselves. The worst possible thing that could have happened would one of these fail and the whole thing come tumbling down. I don't think it would be the first time that it would happen. So yeah, honestly, I was pretty nervous, but thankfully all things did go to plan. So if you watched my part three video, this is where I really explain how the jacking system works. We do basically just use a bottle jack and a two by four, and we use the stilts along the way to hold it. I do have a new solution. I just bought something that I personally think is gonna be the best camper jacking system for DIY builds. I'm going to put it to the test actually this weekend. You already know I'm going to be filming the whole thing and if it works out well, I will I will let you guys know. All right, so we got the truck way up. We're at about 30 inches underneath. It's a pretty stressful moment here, but uh my dad's going to grab the truck, so we're going to get it up and on pretty soon here. Hopefully uh all goes to plan, you know. <laughs> if anybody has a truck camper out there, they know this struggle. You gotta get that lineup perfect. I honestly think I only gave myself about a half inch between the wheel wells. Um, so that's a half inch on either side. So it's very tight. But yeah, we, we managed to get it back there. I mean, we did have like four four people out there, so it shouldn't have been too hard. 
and now it's time to lower and funny enough it's actually harder to lower than go up with my system just because you have to max out the jack on the way up and then basically jack it up another inch just to take the weight off and then yeah start to lower it so for tie downs i started with these turnbuckles and again this was a loss do not do this I mean, if you really need something, they do work, and I had them on there for the first four months, but they bent the crap out of the eye bolts I was using. They would constantly loosen due to the vibrations of the road, and I already changed it. Um, I'm now using a chain with some springs in it, and you know, I'll, I'll show those soon, maybe in a YouTube short or something like that. So now that the camper's on, it's time to install the battery, and I was like, yeah, let's fire it up. I did all this wiring. I might as well drop the battery on and see how these lights work. So right away, I connected everything. You can see the fuse there, and boom, those exterior lights blew me away with how bright they were. Sometimes I don't even like using them because they're so bright. But this, was, again, was a really proud moment here. My dad was like, let's get the wood stove going. So we got the wood stove going right away. Um, yeah, it was, it was a really happy moment, and it definitely felt like a day of success. I was just so stoked to watch this puppy burn. <laughs> Ooh, this turned out really good. Yeah. Jeez, didn't know I'd be lighting up soccer fields with these two bad boys. Got pops in here. Oh, yeah, the fuse is dead. No way, you're boosting. Fire is roasting. Huge dub for the boys today, eh, Dad? Big day, big day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So once we put the camper on the truck, it was time to finalize the inside. We still had a few more panels to put in, but really there wasn't too much work to be done. So I just varnished up these last few panels and installed them to complete the siding in the inside. Battery charger installed, got the battery in. We're just gonna cover this up for the road trip. But yeah, again, just final touches back here. She's looking decent. Oh, you got a handle outside. Yeah, so it's easy to get off. Too. So I actually built the camper near Toronto, Ontario, and I live in the interior of BC. So once I finished this camper, I actually had a 4,000 kilometer drive or roughly a 3,000 mile road trip to get back home. Right now you can just see what the inside of the camper looks like and we're basically just saddling up for the road trip. Now once I put this camper on and once I got it all the way to BC, I actually lived in it for the most part for the next four months. I did lots of road trips all over BC and just lived out of it for the winter. Over those next four months is when shit really hit the fan and I mean that in the best way possible. I had an animal break into my camper and totally messed the interior up chewing all my electrical cables and more, as well as experiencing my first roof leak and what went wrong there. But all that is gonna be coming up in, a, in my next series called my first four months in my truck camper, so stay tuned for that. This here is my dad and I driving in Northern Ontario and the weather can be pretty brutal up there. And we were just learning the ropes of driving this new rig. So yeah, we had to take it nice and easy and it was a good four day road trip for sure. And finally, we did make it to my home in the interior of BC, and this is the truck camper after it arrived. And it was officially time for me to slap on the camper's sign. This was my name. It is called the Shoebox. And the reason for that is because when I was a kid, I used to take all my belongings to my ski chalet in my shoebox. I'd basically just pack like a tiny little thing. And now it's a joke because this is what I pack now when I want to go skiing. And yeah, so the shoebox it is. All right, thank you guys so much for making it to the very end of another video. I do want to give a little reward for the people that made it all the way to the end of a video. If you drop a comment and you start your comment with the shoebox or shoebox, I will answer your comments first. So just answer it with shoebox and then your question or whatever your comment is and I'll be sure to get back to you guys first. As I said, I got a ton of videos coming soon. All the first road trips, electrical, etc. Let me know which ones you guys want to see first, and I'll be sure to prioritize those. Thanks so much. I love this community, and I hope your camper is doing well. You know I believe in you, so whatever you're working on, you got this. Keep pushing through. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Cheers. All right. No! You're
joking. 